Act Five of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Scene One: The Plains of Philippi. Enter Octavius, Antony, and their army. Now, Antony, our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills and upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us in Philippi here. Answering before we do demand them. Tut, I am in their bosoms, and I know wherefore they do it. They could be content to visit other places, and come down with fearful bravery, thinking by this face to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage. But tis not so. Enter a messenger. Prepare you, generals. The enemy comes on in gallant show. Their bloody sign of battle is hung out, and something to be done immediately. Octavius, lead your battle softly on, upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand, I Keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. March. Drum. Enter Brutus, Cassius, and their army, Lucilius, Titinius, Messala, and others. They stand, and would have parley. Stand fast, Titinius. We must out and talk. Mark, Antony, shall we give the sign of battle? No, Caesar. We will answer on their charge. Make forth. The generals would have some words. Stir not until the signal. Words before blows. Is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hole you made in Caesar's heart, crying, Long live! Hail, Caesar! Antony, the posture of your blows are yet unknown, but for your words they rob the hybla bees and leave them honeyless. Not stingless, too. Oh, yes, and soundless, too, for you have stolen their buzzing, Antony, and very wisely threat before you sting. Villains, you did not so when your vile daggers hacked one another in the sides of Caesar. You showed your teeth like apes, and fawned like hounds, and bowed like bondmen, kissing Caesar's feet, whilst damn Casca, like a cur behind, struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatterers! flatterers now brutus thank yourself this tongue had not offended so to-day if cassius might have ruled come come the cause if arguing makes us sweat the proof of it will turn to redder drops look i draw a sword against conspirators when you think that the sword goes up again never till caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged or till another Caesar have added slaughter to the swords of traitors. Caesar, thou canst not die by traitors' hands unless thou bringst them with thee. I so hope, but I was not born to die on Brutus's sword. Oh, if thou wert the noblest of thy strain, young man, thou couldst not die more honourable. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honour, joined with a masker and a reveller. Old Cassius still. Come, Antony, away. Defiance, traitors, hurl we in your teeth. If you dare fight to-day, come to the field. If not, when you have stomachs. Exeunt Octavius, Antony, and their army. Why now, blow wind, swell billow, and swim bark. The storm is up, and all is on the hazard. Ho, oh, Lucilius, hark a word with you. Lucilius, standing forth. My lord? Brutus and Lucilius converse apart. Messala. Messala, standing forth. What says my general? Messala, this is my birthday, as this very day was Cassius born. Give me thy hand, Messala. Be thou my witness that against my will, as Pompey was, am I compelled to set upon one battle all our liberties. You know that I held Epicurus strong, and his opinion. Now I change my mind, and partly credit things that do presage. Coming from Sardis on our former ensign, 
Two mighty eagles fell, and there they perched, gorging and feeding from our soldiers' hands, who to Philippi here consorted us. This morning are they fled away and gone, and in their steads do ravens, crows, and kites fly o'er our heads, and downward look on us, as we were sickly prey. Their shadows seem a canopy most fatal, under which our army lies, ready to give up the ghost. Believe not so. I but believe it partly, for I am fresh of spirit, and resolve to meet all perils very constantly. Even so, Lucilius. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods to-day stand friendly, that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days to age. But since the affairs of men rest still incertain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then this is the very last time we shall speak together. What are you then determined to do? Even by the rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato for the death which he did give himself, I know not how, but I do find it cowardly and vile for fear of what might fall, so to prevent the time of life, arming myself with patience to stay the providence of some high powers that govern us below. Then if we lose this battle you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind. But this same day must end that work, the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore our everlasting farewell take. For ever and for ever, farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then? This parting was well made. For ever and for ever, farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true this parting was well made. Why then, lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business ere it come. But it sufficeth that the day will end, and then the end is known. Come, ho, away! Exeunt Scene two, the same, the field of battle. Alarum, enter Brutus and Messala. Ride, ride, Messala, ride, and give these bills unto the legions on the other side. Loud alarum. Let them set on at once, for I perceive but cold demeanour in Octavius' wing, and sudden push gives them the overthrow. Ride, ride, Messala, let them all come down. Exeunt. Scene three. Another part of the field. Alarums. Enter Cassius and Titinius. Oh, look, Titinius, look, the villains fly. Myself have to mine own turned enemy. This ensign here of mine was turning back. I slew the coward, and did take it from him. Oh, Cassius, Brutus gave the word too early, who, having some advantage on Octavius, took it too eagerly. His soldiers fell to spoil, whilst we by Antony are all enclosed. Enter Pindarus. Fly further off, my lord, fly further off. Mark Antony is in your tents, my lord. Fly, therefore, noble Cassius, fly far off. This hill is far enough. Look, look, Titinius, are those my tents where I perceive the fire? They are, my lord. Titinius, if thou lovest me, mount thou my horse and hide thy spurs in him, till he have brought thee up to yonder troops and here again, that I may rest assured whether yon troops are friend or enemy. I will be here again, even with a thought. Exit. Go, Pindarus, get higher on that hill. My sight was ever thick. Regard to Tinius, and tell me what thou know'st about the field. Pindarus ascends the hill. This day I breathe first. Time has come round, and where I did begin there shall I end. My life is run his compass. Sirrah, what news? Pindarus, above. Oh, my lord! What news? Pindarus, above. Titinius is enclosed round about with horsemen that make to him on the spur. Yet he spurs on. Now they are almost on him. Now, Titinius, now some light. 
oh he lights too he's tan shout and hark they shout for joy come down behold no more oh coward that i am to live so long to see my best friend tane before my face pindarus descends come hither sirrah in parthia did i take thee prisoner and then i swore thee saving of thy life that whatsoever i did bid thee do thou shouldst attempt it come now keep thine oath now be a free man and with this good sword that ran through caesar's bowels search this bosom stand not to answer here take thou the hilts and when my face is covered as tis now guide thou the sword pindarus stabs him caesar thou art revenged even with the sword that killed thee dies so i am free yet would not so have been durst i have done my will o cassius far from this country pindarus shall run where never rome shall take note of him exit re-enter titinius with messala it is but changed titinius for octavius is overthrown by noble brutus power as cassius legions are by antony these tidings will well comfort cassius where did you leave him all disconsolate with pindarus his bondman on this hill is not that he that lies upon the ground he lies not like the living oh my heart is not that he no this was he messala but cassius is no more o setting sun as in thy red rays thou dost sink to-night so in his red blood cassius's day is set the sun of rome is set our day is gone clouds dews and dangers come our deeds are done mistrust of my success hath done this deed mistrust of good success has done this deed o hateful error melancholy's child why dost thou show to the apt thoughts of man the things that are not o error soon conceived thou never comest unto a happy birth but kills the mother that engendered thee what pindarus where art thou pindarus seek him titinius whilst i go to meet the noble brutus thrusting this report into his ears i may say thrusting it for piercing steel and darts and venom shall be as welcome to the ears of brutus as tidings of this sight hi you messala and i will seek for pindarus the while exit messala why didst thou send me forth brave cassius did i not meet thy friends and did not they put on my brows this wreath of victory and bid me give it thee didst thou not hear their shouts alas thou hast misconstrued everything but hold thee take this garland on thy brow thy brutus bid me give it thee and i will do his bidding brutus come apace and see how i regarded caius cassius by your leave gods this is a roman's part come cassius the sword and find titinius's heart kills himself alarum re-enter messala with brutus cato strato volumnius and lucilius where where messala doth his body lie lo yonder and titinius mourning it titinius face is upward he is slain o oh, julius caesar thou art mighty yet thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails low alarums brave titinius look whether he have not crowned dead cassius are yet two romans living such as these the last of all the romans fare thee well it is impossible that ever rome should breed thy fellow friends i owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay i shall find time cassius i shall find time come therefore 
and to Thassos send his body. His funerals shall not be in our camp, lest it discomfort us. Lucilius, come, and come, young Cato, let us to the field. Labio and Flavius, set our battles on. Tis three o'clock, and Romans, yet ere night, we shall try fortune in a second fight. Exeunt. Scene four, another part of the field. Alarum. Enter, fighting, soldiers of both armies, then Brutus, Cato, Lucilius, and others. Yet, countrymen, oh, yet hold up your heads. What bastard doth not? Who will go with me? I will proclaim my name about the field. I am the son of Marcus Cato. Ho! A foe to tyrants and my country's friend. I am the son of Marcus Cato. Ho! And I am Brutus. Marcus Brutus I. Brutus, my country's friend. Know me for Brutus. Exit. O young and noble Cato, art thou down? Why, now thou diest as bravely as Titinius and mayst be honoured, being Cato's son. Yield, or thou diest. Only I yield to die. There is so much that thou wilt kill me straight. Kill Brutus, and be honoured in his death. Offering money. We must not. A noble prisoner. Room, ho! Tell Antony, Brutus is taken. I'll tell the news. Here comes the general. Enter Antony. Brutus is taken. Brutus is taken, my lord. Where is he? Safe, Antony. Brutus is safe enough. I dare assure thee that no enemy shall ever take alive the noble Brutus. The gods defend him from so great a shame. When you do find him, or alive, or dead, he will be found like Brutus, like himself. This is not Brutus, friend, but I assure you, a prize no less in worth. Keep this man safe. Give him all kindness. I had rather have such men my friends than enemies. Go on, and see whether Brutus be alive or dead, and bring us word into Octavius' tent how everything is chanced. Exeunt. Scene five. Another part of the field. Enter Brutus, Dardanius, Clitus, Strato, and Volumnius. Come, poor remains of friends, rest on this rock. Statilius showed the torchlight, but, my lord, he came not back. He is or taken or slain. Sit thee down, Clitus. Slaying is the word. It is a deed in fashion. Hark thee, Clitus. Whispers. What, I, my lord? No. Not for all the world. Peace, then. No words. I'd rather kill myself. Hark thee, Dardanius. Whispers. Shall I do such a deed? Oh, Dardanius. Oh, Clitus. What ill request did Brutus make to thee? To kill him, Clitus. Look, he meditates. Now is that noble vessel full of grief, that it runs over even at his eyes. Come hither, good Volumnius, list a word. What says my lord? Why this, Volumnius? The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me, two several times by night, at Sardis once, and this last night, here in Philippi fields. I know... My hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, I am sure it is, Volumnius. Thou seest the world, Volumnius, how it goes. Our enemies have beat us to the pit. Low alarums. It is more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till they push us. Good Volumnius, thou knowest that we two went to school together. Even for that our love of old, I prithee, hold thou my sword-hilts whilst I run on it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Alarum still. 
fly fly my lord there is no tarrying here farewell to you and you and you volumnius strato thou hast been all this while asleep farewell to thee too strato countrymen my heart doth joy that yet in all my life i found no man but he was true to me i shall have glory by this losing day more than octavius and mark antony by this vile conquest shall attain unto so fare you well at once for brutus tongue hath almost ended his life's history night hangs upon mine eyes my bones would rest that have but laboured to attain this hour alarum cry within fly 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 my lord fly hence i will follow exeunt cletus dardanius and volumnius i prithee strato stay thou by thy lord thou art a fellow of a good respect thy life hath had some smatch of honour in it hold then my sword and turn away thy face while i do run upon it wilt thou strato give me your hand first fare you well my lord farewell good strato runs on his sword ah caesar now be still i killed not thee with half so good a will dies alarum retreat enter octavius antony messala lucilius and the army what man is that my master's man strato where is thy master free from the bondage you are in messala the conquerors can but make a fire of him for brutus only overcame himself and no man else hath honour by his death so brutus should be found i thank thee brutus that thou hast proved lucilius's saying true all that serve brutus i will entertain them fellow wilt thou bestow thy time with me i if messala will prefer me to you do so good messala how died my master strato i held the sword and he did run on it octavius then take him to follow thee that did the latest service to my master this was the noblest roman of them all all the conspirators save only he did that they did in envy of great caesar he only in a general honest thought and common good to all made one of them his life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world this was a man according to his virtue let us use him with all respect and rites of burial within my tent his bones to-night shall lay most like a soldier ordered honourably so call the field to rest let's away and part the glories of this happy day Exeunt. End of Act 5 End of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare